Greetings from Advanced Fertility. We have been getting a lot of queries on ICSI. What is ICSI? How do we do it? Where we use it? So my today's presentation is going to be on ICSI. So what is ICSI? We hear a lot about it, even in our IVF cycle. Uh, we know that uh, a lot of the cycles is where ICSI is done. So ICSI is intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Cytoplasm is the material inside the egg and when the sperm is injected into the egg, it is called ICSI. So this technique was developed by Dr. Palermo at Brussels University. And the first successful ICSI birth was in 1992, about 28 years from now. So where do we use ICSI in the whole of IVF or assisted conception? We use it in couples where there is male infertility issue. That means either the sperm count is low or the sperm motility is low or the appearance or morphology of the sperm is low. In scientific terms, it is called oats. It's called oligoasthenoteratospermia. Then sometimes there is azospermia or zero sperm count. And we take out the sperms from the testes. Those sperms can be fertilized into the egg only by ICSI. Sometimes the egg shell is thick, as you see in the picture here. And in that case, we need to uh, use the ICSI method to fertilize this egg. So this shell may be thick. That is decided by the scientist. Sometimes when we do a normal IVF cycle, the eggs do not fertilize. So it is called fertilization failure. And from the next cycle, we start using ICSI. Also, women with advanced age sometimes may need ICSI, though it's not that every woman with advanced age needs ICSI and you need to decide. Sometimes their eggshells are also thick. Now, what is IVF and why ICSI is used? So the concept is that in ICSI, one egg, one sperm. And in IVF, which is in vitro fertilization, in one egg, we are putting droplets of sperms, close to 50,000 sperms in each. And then out of this 50,000 sperm, only one sperm will selectively fertilize the egg. So what happens in normal fertilization? This almost the same thing happens in in vitro fertilization. When the sperm is released, it goes into the female tract to find the egg. So about 100 million sperms are released, but there's only one egg. They quickly go and find the face to the egg. And the sperm initially is like this. And then the head, there are enzymes that digest the head. And there's something called the acrosome process that sticks out. And that has the capacity to drill into the shell of the egg and fertilize. And then the uh, genetic material goes into the egg and the embryo is found. As soon as the acrosome uh, process gets into the zona, which is the shell, it, there is a natural process of blocking all other sperms from entering the egg. So complex is the normal fertilization system. So all this is happening is in the fallopian tube and the sperm has come all the way up and then they are fertilizing. One sperm forms the first cleavage cell embryo and then the embryo naturally goes 
back again in the fallopian tube and then sticks to the uterus. So this is how the embryo is formed in the natural cycle and also in in vitro the embryo is formed one sperm finds its way natural selection. But when there is the pro problems that I have discussed, low sperm count, poor sperm motility, poor morphology, testicular sperm, they cannot inject into the egg like that and it has to be mechanically made to inject. So this is called the ICSI micro manipulator and you have this handle holding the egg as you see on this other side. And you have this handle holding the sperm as you see here. And the sperm is pushed into the egg by the embryologist or the scientist using these handles. And it's a very intricate procedure. After the in injection is done, the embryo forms and then the embryo develops in the lab like it developed in the fallopian tube in natural conception and then the embryo is loaded in this uh, catheter like this and then the air bubble embryo transfer is done and then it depends on whether the embryo implants or doesn't implant the pregnancy rate is about 30 to 50 percent per embryo transfer attempt so ICSI, how do we improve the ICSI results? You need good sperms. So if the man is not smoking, not drinking, is taking antioxidants, sometimes in very, very poor sperm motility, a double ejaculate on the same day of egg collection. The second ejaculate may have more powerful sperms. The technique of selecting the good sperms is dependent on the scientist. How good the eggs are depends on the age of the lady, her AMH, the stimulation protocol, and how well the endometrium has been prepared depends on the clinic's protocol, medication, treatment, etc. So all these combined will lead us to a good embryo which will finally hopefully implant and lead us to a positive pregnancy test. Also, there are other methods of improving the ICSI results like the sperm preparation technique. Sometimes you have the swim up technique, the double density. Then there is something called the pixie technique where you can put hyaluronic acid on the edge of your dish and the sperm that sticks to this is the more uh, normal, less DNA fragmented sperm, and these can be used for ICSI. There is a lot of talk about IMC nowadays, intracytoplasmic morphologically selected. Normal magnification of sperm in ICSI is about 400, and in IMC it is about 60,000. I'm sorry, it's about 6,000. So this dramatically increased uh, magnification is probably helping us to select the better sperm. However, the latest studies have shown that ICSI and IMSI do not really lead to better pregnancy outcomes. So the studies are out there and whether we should spend extra money in more of these technology which are still unproven is a matter of debate. My personal opinion is a well-formed ICSI by a good embryologist will give us as good results as any other technique. Now there's a lot of talk about ICSI and congenital anomalies. Naturally, the congenital anomaly rate is about 1 to 2 percent. In IVF, it increases to 2 percent and in ICSI about 3 percent. 
most of these increase in congenital anomaly is in those men with extreme oligospermia and certain cases of azospermia. These select group of patients must have their genetic screening, karyotype, etc. done. And if they have a genetic anomaly, then PGS must be done. That means genetic screening of these embryos should be done before transfer. This will lead to better ICSI outcome. Now, is ICSI better than IVF? Should we be doing ICSI for all to improve our IVF result? The answer is no. ICSI is specifically for those indications that has been stated, mainly severe male factor sperm problems. Doing it routinely for all cases will not improve our results as has been proven in various scientific articles. I am stating one from human reproduction, which is a large study of about 20,000 embryo transfer which has said that ICSI pregnancy rate is not better than IVF, but is definitely better in those indicated cases. So we must not do ICSI left, right and center, but must do it for the indicated cases. So I would like to say that ICSI is a revolutionary tool that has helped many men father their own children and those with severe male infertility especially, it needs special skills and equipment to give the best outcome. Thank you very much. If you have any further questions, you can please mention in the comment section and we'll be happy to make another YouTube regarding your question. Thank you once again.